The angelic hosts are a separate order of created beings. They are entirely different from the material order of mortal creatures, and they function as a distinct group of universe intelligences. Angels are not of that group of creatures called the sons of God in the scriptures. Neither are they glorified spirits of mortal men who have gone on to progress through the mansions on high. Angels are a direct creation and they do not reproduce themselves. The angelic hosts have only a spiritual kinship with the human race. As man progresses in the journey to the Father in Paradise, he does traverse a state of being at one time analogous to the state of the angels, but mortal man never becomes an angel. The angels never die as man does. The angels are immortal, unless perchance they become involved in sin, as did some of them in the deceptions of Lucifer. The angels are the spirit servants in heaven, and they are neither all wise nor all powerful, but all of the loyal angels are truly pure and holy. And do you not remember that I said to you once before that if you had your spiritual eyes anointed, you would then see the heavens opened and behold the angels of God ascending and descending. It is by the ministry of the angels that one world may be kept in touch with other worlds. For have I not repeatedly told you that I have other sheep not of this fold? And these angels are not the spies of the spirit world, who would watch upon you and then go forth to tell the Father the thoughts of your heart and to report on the deeds of the flesh. The Father has no need of such service, inasmuch as his own spirit lives within you. But these angelic spirits do function to keep one part of the heavenly creation informed concerning the doings of the other and remote parts of the universe. And many of the angels, while functioning in the government of the Father and in the universes of the sons, are assigned to the service of the human races. When I taught you that many of the seraphim are ministering spirits, I spoke not in figurative language nor in poetic strange, strains, and all this is true regardless of your difficulty in comprehending such matters. Many of these angels are engaged in the work of saving men, for have I not told you in the, of the seraphic joy when one soul elects to forsake sin and begin the search for God? I did even tell you of the joy in the presence of angels of heaven over one sinner who repents, thereby indicating the existence of other and higher orders of celestial beings who are likewise concerned in the spiritual welfare and with the divine progress of mortal man. Also are these angels very much concerned with the means whereby man's spirit is released from the tabernacles of the flesh and his soul escorted to the mansions in heaven. Angels are the sure and heavenly guides of the soul of man during that uncharted and indefinite period of time which intervenes between the death of the flesh and the new life in the spirit abodes.